Huh? Do you also see Navia and Clorand over there? They look like they might have run into some kind of trouble. Let's go check out what's going on! Hmm. Still no dice? Uh, not at all. And I've asked pretty much everyone in the Court of Fontaine already. Lynette's ears drooped as soon as she heard that we'd have to be out and about for days on end. And Fremenet, uh, he hid himself under his helmet as soon as he realized there'd be people around that he didn't know. Hmm. What about Chiori and Charlotte? I feel like both of them would be more than up to it. Mm, I've asked them already, but they're both pretty busy right now. I just gave the members of the Spina a few days off, too, so I don't want to bother them either. Hmm, this is getting pretty difficult. Nadia, Cloran, what's up? Oh my, <laughs> well if it isn't my dear partners, how are you all doing? Huh, Navia? Huh? Oh, you mean... Yep, this is our chance. Do you need our help with something? Oh, precisely. My dear partners, we've got a huge problem right now that only you can solve. Whoa, for real? Absolutely. We've already exhausted all our other options. Traveler, Paimon, would you join us and play Mar Chose Hunter Judgment Day? Mar Chose what now? It's a new game script by the Tabletop Troupe, a local roleplay adventure club. Ever heard of the Tabletop Troupe? They put out games that allow you to participate in a story and roleplay characters with your friends. Oh, I've loved their stuff ever since I was a kid. That sounds super interesting. Clorand and I are both veteran members of the club. Recently, someone came up with a new script and was looking for people to help playtest it for them. And when they asked, of course. Of course, I couldn't refuse. <laughs> I mean, come on, a brand new script? Nobody has ever played it before. Mm-hmm. Generally speaking, scripts at that level of development have a lot of issues. But I think this one is pretty solid. The author obviously put a lot of work into the story, and the world building is also quite credible. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I know I was the one that handed you the script, but some of us haven't read it yet. No spoilers, please. <laughs> anyway, the script calls for a team of four. Ah, yes. We're missing one final player right now. So, you're saying you'll help us out? Oh, I knew I could count on you, partner. Uh, Paimon and the Traveler are kind of a package deal. Is that okay? That's not a problem. I'll adjust the pace based on the actual number of players, and ensure that everyone has a good time. Well, Traveler, what do you think? Wanna play? Paimon will follow your lead. Well, that solves our problem. You have our thanks. Woohoo! <laughs> I'll go grab the script manager from the club right away. The script manager? Didn't you just say that you gave Claren the script? The club introduced a completely new kind of gameplay for the script. In this iteration, the Game Master's version of the script is incomplete. The script manager provides the next part of the script only after players have completed the current list of objectives. On top of that, in order to increase player immersion, the club has created some of the story's sets and scenes in real life. We'll only know where we should go once the script manager reveals the starting location. Wow, you're right! Whoever wrote this script really did put in a lot of work! <laughs> and it's got a real healthy amount of suspense, right? I mean, even the GM doesn't know how the story will end. I look forward to experiencing it with you all. Why don't you go meet up with the others first? They should all be waiting at Chioria Boutique. I'll come over with the script manager as soon as I find them. Sounds good. Remember to always watch where you're going, and don't rush. Oh, you say that like I'm six years old or something. <laughs> Hmm, let me think. What kind of character should I play this time? I just hope you'll pick up some useful skills this time. Oh, and stop trying to persuade every animal you come across. Oh, sorry to keep you waiting. Ah, uh, you're back! Huh? And 
you've got the Traveler and Paimon with you, too. What a pleasant surprise. I assume you'll be joining us for the game, then? Linny, Farina! Paimon didn't know you were playing, too. Are you also members of the Tabletop Troop? Hmm, I'm more of a casual member, if anything. I haven't taken part in many formal club activities. Lynette Fremenet and I play something similar at the Hotel Bouffe Tete sometimes, but I'm usually the GM. Still, I'm sure it'll be fun being a player for the first time. I'm looking forward to it. Well, I'm not a member of the club at all. Cloran simply woke me up first thing this morning, said there was a good script worth experiencing, and asked if I wanted in. If you're interested, I can give you a referral. That should give you a 40% discount on membership fees. I think I'll wait to see how this experience plays out first, especially when it comes to the quality of the script. If it's sufficiently fun, then I'll join. Do you participate in a lot of tabletop troop activities, Clarine? You could say that. She's actually one of the few senior game masters of the troop. Ah, right. I knew about that even when she was still my subordinate. Oh, <laughs> it's... Nothing. Really, just a small hobby of mine. Wow. Hyman's so used to seeing you be all upstanding and intimidating as the champion duelist. It's kind of hard to imagine you role-playing with a bunch of friends. Surely you jest. I would never intentionally make things difficult for my players. I maintain a clear boundary between my professional and personal lives. The me you see at court represents the law and order of Fontaine. I put all personal feelings to the side, and grant a fair duel to all who seek to defend their honor. But in my personal life, I'm just an ordinary person. Someone who feels anger and sadness, just like everyone else. Well, you say that, but for all the time I've known you, I don't think I've ever seen you cry. I've seen you get angry, sure, but now I'm wondering whether you were actually mad or if it just looked that way from the outside. Uh, I was probably in work mode during those times. Is that so? Well, in any case, I just feel like even in your personal life, you don't get emotional very often. So you want to see me cry? That might be a little difficult. A show of anger, though. That might be something I could accomplish. <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. Ah, I'm back! Here, allow me to introduce you to the script manager, Mr. Florian. Pleasure to meet you all. Hello! Uh, wait, are you a champion duelist too, Mr. Florian? Oh, no. This is just the costume provided by the club. I occasionally play a few of the roles in my scripts. That sounds like a lot of work. It's nothing. It's the least we can do to give the players a more immersive experience. Anyway, allow me to give you a brief introduction of the script. This script was adapted from the real history of the Maro Shose Hunters. You all will play the role of hunters from a bygone era and resolve a series of events unfolding in the capital. Um, Paimon's not super familiar with the history of the Maro Shose Hunters. Is that a problem? Oh, no problem at all. I can give you a brief rundown. So, basically, Mara Shose hunters were people who dedicated themselves to hunting monsters and protecting the city by using a special swordsmanship technique passed down over generations. Their story can be traced back to the ancient Remurian dynasty, as well as the first hunter, Cassiodor. But I'll leave the finer details for you to seek out and discover later. Mm-hmm. And I'll provide additional commentary as the story progresses. In that case, <clears throat> brave hunters, are you ready to set out on an unknown adventure? Whoa, just one sentence and it's like we're in the story already. Aha, uh -huh. I see many a determined gaze before me. Very well, head over to this location and begin your heroic journey. So, as we follow the story, it leads us to specific scenes? Ooh, <laughs> sounds pretty innovative. What does the message in the envelope say? It's the exact location of the scene, as well as the formal permission to use the venue. 
Seems like they have everything prepared. Please check all your belongings, everyone, and make sure you haven't forgotten anything. Once you're ready, please follow me to the designated location. Sounds good. Hunter Squad, move out! Whoa, they really have thought of everything. Even the Phaetometer is here and ready to go for us. The Phaetometer? What's that? It's a card that's used to determine action success or failure. We'll need to use it when we try to use certain skills. And what about all the dessert and tea? Is that for us as well? That's what the message said. Oh, really? That's so nice. It feels just like a tea party with friends. Those snacks have Paimon's name written all over them. <laughs> I think you might be more of a snack hunter than a Mara Chose hunter, Paimon. Snack hunter Paimon reported for duty. If there are delicious snacks to be found, Paimon will track down every last one. The desserts are great, <laughs> but I'm still looking forward to the story more than anything. <laughs> Very fair. Then, let us begin. First, please pick up the blank character cards in front of you, and write down your name and profession. You can find an abbreviated version of the rules printed on the back of your character card. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. In this story, everyone is a Mara Chaussee hunter. To reflect this, the club has prepared a small badge for everyone. Ooh, nice! As hunters, you have proficiency in swordsmanship and fighting by default, so there's no need to allocate any additional skill points to those areas. Swordsmanship? So there's a fighting part to all of this? Um, Paimon's not sure she can do all that on her own. Maybe Paimon can just stick with you? <laughs> Why don't you share a character card, then? The Traveler will be the Mara Chaussee Hunter, and you can be his little floating assistant. <laughs> ah, kind of like in real life. So, for the name, do I fill it out with the name of my character? Yep, it can be any name you like. You can use your real name too if you want. I do that whenever I get too lazy to think of a new name. Oh, so it would be like, uh, like experiencing a different life, but still as yourself. Hmm. That's not a bad idea. Hmm, in that case, I think I'll continue to use the name Linny then. Next up is the skill sheet. You have a limited amount of skill points that you can use to learn a number of skills. The more points you invest in a particular skill, the easier it will be to pass associated checks. Hmm. I'll take... Persuasion and Investigation. Those are must-haves when it comes to missions like these. Oh, those skills sound like they'd be useful for gathering intelligence. Good idea, Navia. Just as expected of a veteran player. Hmm. So, should we also take those skills, then? Not necessarily. Since we're working together as a team, we could leave the negotiations to Navia and use our skill points to pick up other useful skills. For example, I think I'll take Stealth and Sleight of Hand. That will give us more options if we run into any situations we can't negotiate our way out of. Oh, interesting! I wasn't thinking about it like that. I suppose it's not so different from an acting troupe. Everyone has their own role to play. Let me see. I'll take art and performance. I'm not quite sure what use they'll be, but I'm not as knowledgeable about the other skills. And uh, I'm not too confident I'd be able to roleplay them well. Well, that leaves us. What do you want to learn, Traveler? Ho <laughs> ho! Gotta say, this suits you really well. Nothing boosts morale like good food. Let's see. <clears throat> oh, looks like you each have enough points to choose one final skill. You've all picked such classic skills. 
It's fine to go a little bit out of the box, you know. Why do I get the feeling she's getting ready to cause trouble? For example, this one here. Summon. Doesn't it sound super mysterious and cool? Oh, oh, I saw that one just now as well. The uh, description says, This skill can be used under certain circumstances to summon characters or creatures that fit the script's world-building rules. The script's world-building rules, huh? Hmm. But how are we supposed to know what a Marashose hunter can summon? Oh, that's not for us to worry about, my friend. Just learn the skills that interest you, and the GM will take care of the rest. <sighs> All right, you've convinced Paimon. Let's learn summon, then. Paimon can't wait to see what kind of thing shows up. Well, now that everyone's more or less finished creating their characters, we can begin. Since two of our players are doing this for the first time, though, let me ask. Would you like to play on easy mode or authentic mode? Uh, what's the difference between the two? Well, in role-playing games, the story sometimes changes based on the decisions of the players and the results of the fatometer. For example, if you fail a check, that means you cannot use the target skill in that scenario. A critical failure may even result in further negative consequences. If you choose to play in authentic mode, every time you elect to use a skill, you'll need to use the fatometer to see whether you succeed or fail, and face any consequences that may follow. If you choose easy mode instead, every check will be successful by default, and you won't have to worry about luck playing a factor. Hmm... Given that I'd like to focus on the story, I suppose I should pick easy mode. I'd feel bad if I brought the team down by failing my checks. Huh? Oh, come on. Don't worry about that. RNG is the lifeblood of role-playing games. I'm going with authentic mode for sure. Never knowing what you might have to overcome. Ugh, doesn't that sound exciting? Um, I, I'd rather be mentally prepared for what might happen. All right, then I'll mark down Farina for easy mode. All her checks will be successful by default. As usual, Navia and Linny will play on authentic mode. What about you, dear partner? How would you like to play? Mm-hmm. No need to worry about the pesky fatometer. Pretty good choice if you just want to relax and play the game. Honestly, I don't think Clorand would make things too difficult for us, no matter what the fatometer says. Isn't that right, Clorand? Hmm, <laughs> no promises. Ah, uh, that wasn't super reassuring. Well, anyway, enough talk. Let's get started. I want to experience at least a good chunk of the story today. Speaking of the story, why is the beginning scene on a beach? Well, that's because... <clears throat> a long time ago, back when human civilization was still in its infancy, powerful demons and evil sorcerers ruled over the land. They created a host of monsters and sent them to slaughter all humans in existence. Soon, a group of human rebels banded together. With their swords raised, they swore to brave the darkness, and in doing so, subdue each and every monster that sought their destruction. They became known as the Marashose Hunters. Some time later, as a member of the Marashose Hunters, you receive a commission. Following the address provided on the message, you take a boat and arrive at this strange city. As you inhale, you can taste the slightly salty air of the docks as you begin to survey your surroundings. There aren't many people in the vicinity, but you do take note of a few others who, like you, seem to be sizing up this place. Your eyes meet, and you realize these people are fellow Marashose hunters, likely led to this location after receiving the same commission as you. You're all Marashose hunters too, right? Allow me to introduce myself. The name's Navia. 
monster hunter by trade, and helpful neighborhood businesswoman on the side. What say you to traveling together? We can help each other out on the road. Okay, count me in. My name is Linny. I've been wandering since I was little and picked up a few less than legal tricks along the way. I was adopted by Amara Chose Hunter and later chose to follow in his footsteps. Uh, is this where you introduce your character to everyone? It sounds like they've done this dozens of times. <clears throat> My name is Farina, and, um, I grew up in a noble family. I always had a strong interest in performance and the arts. Even though I'm a Marsha Say hunter, what I really want is to be a performing artiste. Hey, that's really cool. You can do it, Farina. That's exactly how it's done. Paimon is Paimon, a good friend and companion to this Mara Chosei hunter right here. I've been studying the culinary arts since I was a child. I hope my delicious food can help boost people's spirits. That's wonderful. I'll be looking forward to your cooking during our adventures together. Well, if we're all here for the same commission, why don't we take some time to confirm what we need to do? You open your envelopes at the same time. The message reads, To the honorable and trustworthy Mara Shosei hunters, our kingdom is currently facing a grave crisis. The lands outside the capital have been overtaken by monsters, and our people are being led astray by forces of wickedness. We beseech you, Please help us resolve this crisis and return peace and stability to our home. Huh. The layout of this city looks super familiar. <gasps> it kind of reminds Paimon of Mondstadt! The scriptwriter must have used a real-world city as a reference when coming up with the map. <clears throat> as experienced hunters, the layout of the city reminds you of places once traveled. You recall the sight of tree-lined streets and the gentle tranquility of days gone by. Yet, as you regard the city in front of you, it appears to be little more than an empty shell. Its hollow gates are open to you, beckoning you to come forth and bring salvation back to the town. I carefully read every line of the letter and turn my attention to the signatures at the bottom. Who issued this commission to us? You see a long string of unfamiliar names. It would seem that many of the residents of the city issued this commission together. They sensed that things were not right within the kingdom, and sent a distress signal to the outside world. Hmm. In that case, why don't we take a walk around the city and see if we can learn anything from the local residents? Oh, good idea! We might be able to get some leads on the monsters and bad guys we're after. You look up and see a tavern nearby. It appears to be open for the day. Why don't we go check out that tavern? If the novels I've read are anything to go by, taverns are usually full of information. As you approach the tavern, you find a plainly dressed woman standing nearby. She appears to be rather troubled about something. Greetings, friend. Lovely weather we're having today, don't you think? Oh, hello. I suppose you're right. The weather today is quite lovely. If only those monsters out there would stop causing trouble. It seems like every character included in the script has a certain amount of useful information to offer. If we keep asking questions, we might be able to get some good leads. Oh, come now, don't be sad. Life is all about optimism. Oh, that reminds me. What did you have for breakfast this morning? Uh, huh? Uh, I don't think that's the kind of question we're supposed to ask. Nothing turns a frown upside down like good food. How about some macarons? I could make you some. You didn't even take cooking as one of your skill proficiencies. Uh, that's not necessary, miss. 
Excuse me for saying this, but you don't really look like a chef. Besides, I'm not really a fan of sweets. So you're someone who barely smiles and doesn't like sweets. Hmm. You're really starting to remind me of this one friend of mine. <laughs> hey! Did she just... Huh? Me? <sighs> Clorian must have broke character for a second. <sighs> this isn't getting us anywhere. Um, Traveler, maybe you can think of something. Are you sure? In that case, please refer to the Phaetometer. Whoa, it was a success! You remain silent as you prepare a pot and fire to use for cooking. The woman stares at you with her mouth agape as you skillfully cut the ingredients and toss them into the pot. After some time, a rich aroma begins to fill the air. Even a passing cat can't help but stop in its tracks and look up in anticipation. Please have some food. Who knows, maybe you'll feel better after eating something delicious. Wow, that's amazing. Wait, so as long as you pass the check, you can pretty much do anything? And it won't be seen as absurd? Oh, thank you. Oh, you were right. This food really did make me feel better. So what had you so worried earlier? Could you tell us a bit more about it? Uh, okay, let me fill you in. A horde of monsters suddenly appeared near the capital recently, so all the guards were dispatched to fight them. Do you remember when those monsters appeared? Uh, I'm not completely sure. All I know is that my husband was dispatched to fight them three days ago. Do you know where he was sent? It all happened so fast. When we said our goodbyes, he couldn't even tell me where they were sending him. You have our thanks, friend. We'll find and defeat those monsters as soon as possible. We sincerely hope your husband will be able to return to your side soon. Oh, thank you. Don't worry. We'll find him. Just try to remain optimistic and wait for good news. We don't always get to choose what happens to us. But we do get to choose the little things, like what we eat and how we respond to the things life throws our way. I hope that one day, you too will recognize the power of something as small and inconsequential as a delicious dessert. I... I'll do my best. You bid farewell to the woman and continue your journey further into the city. As you venture further into the city, the streets appear largely empty. An elderly woman walks past. You see her shake her head as she puts away her wrinkled wallet. A nearby merchant folds his arms and gives you a disdainful look. You get the impression that he's someone who has long gotten used to the sight before him. Although he doesn't seem very... friendly, merchants are usually a good source of information, right? Pardon me, sir. I'd like to ask a question, if I may. That depends. How much are you willing to pay? How about this much? Gah, what do you take me for? Some lowly beggar? Gah, you can't even buy half an onion with that amount. Uh, surely an onion can't be that expensive, right? Eh, what do you know? War is nearly upon us. Everything costs several times what it did before. If you're not gonna buy anything, then scram. Oh, what a nasty guy. Maybe we shouldn't even bother talking to him. Hmm, but he still might have information we need. Uh, traveler, can you think of something? Sir, we came to this city to solve the very problem you seem to be referring to. The war you mentioned. Uh, would it happen to be against the monsters outside the city? If you happen to be well informed and know a thing or two about what's going on, we'd appreciate it if you could share that information with us. After all, the sooner this problem gets resolved, the easier it will be for you to do your business. <sighs> well, things are basically as you said, young lady. Those monsters are camped outside the city, and they've been destroying all our trade routes. We have limited reserves within the city, 
So if this continues, we're all gonna be in big trouble. Wait, you're saying no one has put a plan in place to distribute supplies or maintain order? <laughs> we could all starve and those nobles in the palace wouldn't even break a sweat. Who knows, maybe they've been in cahoots with the monsters all along. That is concerning. All right, all right, that's all the information you need, right? Off with you now, I've still got business to do. You know, if you smiled a little more, you'd definitely get more business. And I bet that would make your life just a little bit sweeter. I'm not saying it's guaranteed to work. It's just a tip. Should we try to go somewhere with more people? Oh, how about the city square? Follow me. Before you lies the city's central square. You see a man with a slightly anxious look on his face, pacing back and forth, his head hanging low. He doesn't seem to notice your approach. Still immersed in his own thoughts, he shakes his head and lets out a long sigh. <sighs> this guy seems promising enough. Maybe I can get some information out of him. Hello, sir. Is there anything I can do to help you? Uh, wait, you're... Uh, I'm... Oh, dear goodness, you're... you're a Mara Chose hunter! You recognize us? Ah, are you... one of the people who wrote the commission letter? Yes, yes! Oh, I didn't expect you to actually come! Oh, what great news! The city is saved! What happened here? Alas, we once lived comfortable, carefree lives. This city used to be free of monsters. The first Mara Chose hunter, Cassiodor, the Golden Hunter, he was the one who drove them back. Uh, however, monsters have once again surrounded the city. Perhaps the seal that kept them at bay has lost its power. Or perhaps an evil sorcerer has been meddling in our affairs. Uh, all I know for sure is that their return has stripped the city of any chance at peace. Are there not enough soldiers to drive them out? It's not a question of numbers. The guards simply have no idea how to deal with them. Most people my age have never even seen one of the monsters, much less been trained to fight against them. Uh, what's worse, many of us don't even know the history of the Mara Chose hunters anymore. When I was a child, though, my grandfather would tell me stories about how the Mara Chose hunters drove back the monsters. So, on the off chance that something might come of it, I decided to reach out to you. To be perfectly honest, I was starting to think all those stories were just tall tales. But now that I've seen you in person, I finally know that it was true. Well, you can rest easy, friend. The righteous and formidable Mar Chose hunters are on the case. The man is touched by your determination and resolve. His eyes begin to well with tears of relief. Still, if we are going to hunt the monsters, we need to know where to find them. Can you give us any leads? Uh, all I know is that the area outside the city is dangerous. I'm afraid I can't point you toward a specific location. Oh, although, if you leave the capital through the main gate and follow the road, you should run into a group of guards. They might know more about where to find the monsters. I see. We'll go look for them, then. All right. Be careful. Oh, and one last thing. The monsters outside the city are just part of the problem. There are evil sorcerers inside the city as well, so be on your guard. They're actively working with the monsters, and have corrupted the court ministers with malicious magic. They're the reason why, even inside the city, everything has been a giant mess. Even one of our kindest ministers has turned into a boorish and unreasonable figure, Interested in nothing but enacting laws that exploit the people. Uh, who knows how much longer we'll be able to go on like this. Talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place. Hmm. I feel bad for him. Maybe we should try to cheer him up? Hey, 
Not everything can be solved with food. I appreciate your kindness, but for now, it's more important to focus on the crisis at hand. Brave hunters, I leave the future of this kingdom to you. If I understood correctly, there are currently two problems in the kingdom that need solving, right? Exactly. We need to defeat the monsters outside the city and take down the evil sorcerer stirring up trouble from within. Hmm. But which problem should we tackle first? Well, this seems like a good moment for a break. Take some time and discuss what you want to do. Let me know when you've made your decision. <sighs> I really didn't expect the people in the city to keep us at arm's length like that. I totally thought the hunters would be treated like heroes. Well, Clarence said the script took cues from the real history of Fontaine, right? Maybe the real-life Morrow Chaussee hunters were also treated like that. I wouldn't say it's a perfect representation of history, but there are definitely some similarities. Would you like to hear more about it? Mm, sure. As long as it doesn't spoil anything in the script. You brought up bits and pieces of the hunter's history before, but it was all in passing. Paimon wants to know too! The hunters were super powerful, right? Were they all from a special line of supernatural beings or something? Kind of like the yokai in Inazuma? No. All Marashose hunters were ordinary mortal fighters. The only thing that set them apart were the special sword techniques passed down over the centuries. Huh? So you mean anyone could become a Marashose hunter? In theory, yes. All you would need to do is survive the rigorous training and master the swordsmanship techniques required to fight the monsters. Still, most people dropped out at the early stages and others called it quits the minute they saw a monster in person. To become a hunter, you must be strong in both body and mind. What kind of monsters did the hunters fight exactly? Oh, and the evil sorcerer the script mentions. Did they exist in real life, too? The land of Fontaine once played host to an ancient dynasty known as Remuria. After that dynasty fell, monsters began to appear intent on obstructing humans from establishing a new social order. One of the ancient sorcerers of Remuria used his power to assemble a formidable army of golems. He sought to use that force to establish himself as king. Uh, now wait a second. Don't tell me that guy was the inspiration for the evil sorcerer in the script. We still haven't found any in-game information on him yet. So uh, why don't you talk about someone else for now? Well, I wasn't planning on going into anything you might be able to find out in the game. But if you want me to talk about something else, then... How about Cassiodor, the Golden Hunter? Or Egeria, the ex-Hydro Archon? Wait, but those people are all from a super long time ago. When did you learn all this, Clarion? From my master. Huh, by master? You mean Miss Petronia? Oh, is someone you know? Absolutely. Miss Petronia and my father were good friends. Back in the day, she would often bring Clorand over to play, but then... Uh, let's not get off topic. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Responding to Egeria's call, a number of warriors followed Cassiodor into battle against the monsters. This group of warriors, under Cassiodor's leadership, became known as the Marachose Hunters. Yet... As Fontaine entered an era of peace, their work gradually became obsolete. The Marachose Phantom, originally an association made up of hunters, eventually came to be predominantly comprised of Melusines. Ah, I see. That explains why most of the people in the script have forgotten the hunters or think of them as nothing more than a legend. Is that really a bad thing, though? It can get tough always being the one shouldering everyone's expectations. Hmm, depends on who you ask, I suppose. If the name of the organization no longer commands respect, investigative work is bound to suffer. Hmm, speaking of investigations, which problem should we tackle first? Monsters or evil sorcerer? I vote monsters. That's the main duty of the hunters, right? We can come back to the sorcerer later. Well said, Miss Farina. 
Plus, if the sorcerers really are the masterminds behind this whole thing, defeating the monsters could give us some clues on their intentions as well. Hmm. What about you, partner? What do you think? It's decided, then. All right. After some discussion, you decide to turn around and head out of the city. Let's take a look around, like that guy said. You there! Outsiders, halt! Well, who's there? An armored man approaches you. He has a tall, muscular build and a determined expression in his eyes. Just one look, and you can tell he's fought in his fair share of battles. Although he's trying his best to conceal his current state, his uneven gait and the sweat dripping down his forehead make it obvious that he's been wounded and is in serious pain. I'm the captain of the guard. I saw you sneaking around the city earlier, so I'll only ask this once. State your purpose, or it's off to the dungeons for the lot of you. Wow, it's been a while since someone's been this suspicious of us. I said talk, not whisper between yourselves. Uh, <clears throat> have you ever heard of the Marchesay Hunters? Mara Chaussee Hunters? Ha! <laughs> that fairy tale, you mean? What, you expect me to believe you're one of them? Using your knowledge of medicine, you're able to deduce that the injury on his calf was a monster's doing, and the wound has already begun to fester. As you check him over, he looks at you with suspicion and retracts his injured leg further back. I'm a doctor by trade. Please, let me redress your wound. You don't have to suffer like this. The man appears somewhat disgruntled at having been exposed, but soon relents and raises his leg for you to take a better look. He allows you to apply a poultice of specialized medicine to the wound, and it appears to bring him much relief. The tension in his brow eases. All oh, right. Guess you lot might actually be real Marachose hunters after all. In any case... You've successfully treated my wound. So, what do you want to know? Do you know where we can find the monsters, or the other guards who are fighting them? He informs you of the various locations where monsters have appeared. He looks in that general direction with a pained gaze, as if a thin, invisible thread is pulling on his wound. Some of our new recruits have never even dealt with a petty thief, and now they're out there fighting monsters. Ah, uh, if it weren't for this cursed leg. Oh, please, sir. Don't get too worked up. You need to focus on your recovery. Just leave the monsters to us. We're Marshosei hunters, after all. Hearing you say that, a glimmer of hope flashes in his eyes. But it disappears almost as quickly as it came. Those monsters aren't easy to deal with. But if you insist on going, I won't stop you either. I just hope all the guards will be able to come back to their families alive. I wish you the best of luck. Based on what the captain said, the monster should be right up ahead. Let's go. Hopefully we're not too late. As you approach the battlefield, you see numerous people lying by the side of the road. They appear to be dressed like guards. Their faces are filled with desperation and terror. Some are screaming and cursing in vain, as if still trying to banish the monstrosities they saw from their minds. A few of the wounded look up at you in shock and disbelief. Quick, leave this place. Turn around and don't look back, they yell. This is the place he mentioned, right? You see broken iron swords scattered all around you, and downed trees riddled with terrifying claw marks. All the signs point to one thing. A truly devastating battle just took place here. Be on your guard, everyone. The monsters might still be around. Before you can finish your sentence, you hear rustling sounds from the surrounding bushes. The monsters have emerged. They close in on you without fear. You get the impression that, in their bloodthirsty eyes, you're just another meal for them to devour. Ah! A little help here! This thing wants to eat my mine! 
Your battle round begins now. The monsters let out a terrifying roar of anger and resentment before dissipating into thin air. Oh, thank goodness it's over. We're lucky the Marachose Hunter class came with all those preset skill points. Otherwise, we would have been in some real trouble. I never knew the Phytometer even determines the amount of damage you inflict. If you get unlucky, isn't it just game over right then and there? Uh, <laughs> that's part of the fun. The uncertainty of fate is what gives these games their appeal. Just as you begin to celebrate your victory, a suspicious lump on the ground catches your attention. A suspicious lump? Wait, could it be the thing that appears after every battle? I walk up to it, crouch down, and begin to carefully examine it. I've still got my right glove on, so it should be fine for me to touch it, right? As you investigate the mound, you discover that the exposed portion appears to be made of wood. It was previously obscured by the large form of the monsters. With the monsters gone, the small protrusion now awaits your discovery, poking out of the ground like a shy flower bud. With everyone's help, you successfully excavate the wooden chest from the ground. Even without opening it, you can tell from the mora and jewels scattered around the chest that it must contain quite the fortune. Makes sense! We worked hard for this. Let's open it we can share what's inside! <laughs> I can understand your excitement, Paimon, but think about it. Doesn't it seem like there are people out there who need this treasure more than us? Yeah. Think about all the people suffering in the capital. Or all those guards who got hurt fighting the monsters. Wouldn't it be better if we gave the treasure to them? Wait, is that how it works? Paimon thought since we were the ones to dig it up, we could just take it for ourselves. Well, let's put it this way. Any decision you make during a role-playing game can impact the future course of the story. But... Would the people really believe us? It's hard enough for us to prove we're Marsha Say Hunters. What if they think we procured the treasure illegally? They might get even more suspicious of us. That's definitely something we should consider. Maybe we can come up with an explanation in advance. Well, if donating it could cause that much trouble, why don't we use it to buy some gear and fill up on good food? Then we'll be ready to fight even more bad guys. Looks like you're facing a difficult choice once again. <clears throat> well, it's getting late. Why don't we call it a day for now? Wow, where did the time go? <laughs> I'm not sure if it's because I'm having so much fun with you all or because the story is particularly enticing, but I feel like I could almost keep going. Here, here. <laughs> Ooh, how about we play through the night? Uh, oh, um, I'm not sure I'll have enough energy for that. <laughs> yeah, that won't work for me either. Lynette will give me an earful if I get home too late. I understand how you feel, Navia, but we have to change venues for the next part of the story anyway. Huh? Another location? Mm-hmm. There's a special note for the GM at the end of this section that says to proceed to an indoor set for the next part of the script. Whoa, they really pulled out all the stops for this new script. Well, even if we end the game for the day, we can still stay a little longer and hear Clarion finish her story, right? Paima wants to hear more about the history of the hunters. Hmm, something tells me you just want to finish the free desserts before we break for the day. That's just a coincidence, okay? Besides, the Paimon not finishing free food feels even worse than having to buy her own! And anyway, Paimon really does want to hear more about Cloran's master. Well... Uh, it's nothing. I appreciate the concern, but it's all in the past. It won't do any harm to share these things now. My earliest memories are of living with Master. According to her, she saved me from certain people of ill repute. 
My birth parents had left me behind some time before that. <sighs> what a heavy beginning for a life story. Master was a fascinating individual. If inexperienced in the ways of raising children. My first ever toy was a short sword. Although I suppose it wasn't so much a toy as something Master removed from her waist and handed to a noisy child in need of distraction. Wait, so she handed an actual sword to a child? Isn't that dangerous? Did you hurt yourself? <laughs> of course I did. I cut my palm and bled quite a lot. But Master was not concerned. She just stood there and casually lectured me about it. See? That's what you get for not holding the sword properly, she told me. She then crouched down next to me and said, Give me your hand. I'll teach you to bandage this wound. After that, it's time to learn how to truly hold a blade. Excuse me for asking this, Clorand, but how old were you exactly when all this happened? Probably around, um, three, give or take. Uh, three? Isn't that when most kids are still struggling to hold a fork? As I said, Master was rather inexperienced in the ways of raising children. She believed trial and error was the best way to teach a child what they're capable of. I'm not so sure this is a question of experience. I didn't see anything wrong with her ways at the time. And anyway, children don't get to choose how they're raised. Oh, she did bring me back a pet from Liyue once. It was a Geovishab hatchling. A Geovishab hatchling? For a pet? That seems even more dangerous. What she said was this. Make sure to get along, you two. If you really can't agree on something, just settle it with a fight. Whoever loses is the real pet. Uh, and how old were you when this happened? Five. Well, did you win? No, I lost. So you're saying you actually became the Geo Bishop's pet? <laughs> yes, but only for a week. By the end of that week, I defeated it in combat, and we've shared a cordial relationship ever since. That really doesn't sound like the kind of childhood someone should have. Later on, I gradually understood that Master most likely didn't know any other way to raise a child. She was a Mara Chaussee hunter, but I never heard her bring up her own parents. Thanks to her, I learned how to navigate the forest by the age of six and could hunt monsters in the wild by myself the year after that. Even though the training she subjected me to was strict, she always made sure to take me traveling when she had the time. We met many of her friends during those days. That was also how I met Mr. Callus and his family. <laughs> I still remember the first time we met. You were too scared to join our picnic and hid behind Ms. Petronia the whole time. <laughs> I still hadn't really met many children my age at that time, so I didn't know how to interact with others. After that, though, you started coming over a lot. You loved challenging people to shooting competitions, remember? I don't think many members of the Spina ever beat you in one of those. I had a lot of fun during those days. <laughs> I enjoyed them, too. Oh, do you remember that one time we went exploring around the Spina together? We overheard Papa call your master Fontaine's Protector of Justice. We tried to pretend like we never heard anything, but you nearly let it slip that one time. <laughs> Protector of Justice? Oh, wait, you mean that vigilante hero from 20 years ago? The one who was always active at night? <laughs> yep, that would be her. She often would put on a black cloak and go out at night. I never knew where she went or what she was doing. Until, like Navia said, we overheard the truth from Mr. Callus that night. Twenty years ago, huh? I still remember the guards leaving all kinds of witness reports about her on Nervalette's desk. Ah, uh, my apologies. <laughs> There's no need to apologize. You had nothing to do with it. And anyway, everything she did was for a good cause. Although, calling herself the protector of order was a bit much. 
Especially when she deliberately operated outside the law. Huh? When did the Protector of Justice become the Protector of Order? Oh, she had a bunch of code names. I heard she would just come up with a name on the spot whenever she was asked. Later on, she probably got sick of answering those questions and decided to stick to just two. The Protector of Justice and the Protector of Order. That sounds like her, all right. I bet she forgot which of the two she'd use by the time she got back each night. Well, she certainly sounds like a fascinating individual. With her strong sense of justice, it's no surprise her student followed in her footsteps. It's true. I always wanted to become like her. Someone powerful, independent, and with a strong sense of conviction. But... But... Hmm. She suddenly disappeared the night I turned ten years old. Disappeared? What happened? I have no idea. She didn't even leave a note. I was never able to find out where she went. That night, I was celebrating my birthday at Navia's house. But Master never came to pick me up. When I returned home on my own, it was to an empty house. When she still didn't appear after a few days, I went to Mr. Callis's house to ask about her whereabouts, but he only shook his head. Papa probably didn't know either. I know he sent a few people to investigate the matter in secret, but they never found any credible leads. Don't worry, I understand. To be perfectly honest, given Master's personality and way of doing things, it all made a lot of sense. If I had to guess, I'd say she probably used it as an opportunity to force me to become independent. Just like how, when a litter of kittens reaches a certain age, the mother willingly leaves them behind. Were... were you upset, Clorand? I was at first, but not anymore. I don't believe Master would suddenly disappear for no reason. There must have been something she just had to do. Well, despite everything, you still managed to follow in her footsteps and become the greatest champion duelist in all of Fontaine. You're practically a living symbol of law and justice. Hmm. <laughs> I suspect my position would be far too by the books for her. Master always did whatever she pleased. But you're right. I suppose I do take after her in some ways. <sighs> Who knew Clorand had such an interesting past? I never had the chance to ask her about it before. I wonder... If Clorand's master were the champion duelist back then... Would that duel against Mr. Callus have gone differently? Oh no... Judging by the atmosphere, Clorand and Navia are probably thinking something similar. The mood just got super awkward all of a sudden. Well, anyway... Huh. Uh, would you look at the time? It's getting dark, so we should probably call it a day for real this time. If we keep talking like this, we really will be here all night. I had a great time today, Miss Clorand. Thank you for being our GM. Anytime. The script was good, but I've got to say, your childhood stories were even better. Hey, you should tell us more about that fight against the Geovishop sometime. Maybe your master was on to something. <laughs> hmm, you could be right. <laughs> what does she mean, on to something? I certainly don't know any five-year-olds who want to fight a bishop in their spare time. Guess I'll head back as well. I need to save my energy if I want to continue enjoying the story tomorrow. You're that excited to hear about my fight with the bishop? I was talking about the script! <laughs>